dear learner welcome in my lecture of web technology today i will discuss about life cycle of jsp page directory structure of jsp anatomy of jsp page i am dr ashutosh kumar bhat associate professor school of computer science and it uttarakhand open university haldwani so first of all the learning objective of this lecture is to understand life cycle of jsp page and to understand directory structure of jsp in the previous lecture we have discussed about the advantage of jsp jsp engine and jsp architecture so we know about the architecture as well as benefit and jsp engine of jsp so so first uh, of all the life cycle of the jsp page when we execute a jsp program or we send the request to server the jsp parser will convert our jsp program dot jsp program into dot class program and finally it will respond accordingly so this is broadly we can say the life cycle of the jsp page but uh, critically we can see it and uh, in detail we can see it the jsp page is converted by jsp translator into the servlet so we are working when we are working on jsp basically jsp further translated into the servlet so it is very important point of this uh, java server page is that jsp program is translated into the servlet and where it is converted into dot java file the first file the source file which is written in jsp it will converted into dot java file and further the compiler will compile it and convert the file into dot class file means it is converted into byte code and this byte code through jre java runtime environment it is converted into servlet object and through buffer accordingly it respond to the client so that this is the client server response cycle the request is sent by the client and the client send the request it execute the jsp program and the jsp program which is located in the server and accordingly it is translated into servlet and then is compiled into the class file then through jre uh, the proper response move to the client so this is the complete life cycle of the jsp page now you can see again this diagram also this is somehow related to the life cycle of jsp so again here uh, this is the different program this is the different diagram where uh, in step 1 get hello dot jsp the source program that is hello dot jsp which is uh, stored in the server and this hello dot jsp is executed through the client so client will invoke or execute this hello dot jsp which is stored in the server jsp container server with jsp container and in second step the server will will read this hello dot jsp so as it will read the js uh, hello dot jsp uh, it will generate it will convert hello dot jsp into hello uh, underscore jsp dot java hello hello jsp dot java so this is the second file it is converted into dot java file so this is the translation phase this phase this first phase is called translation phase and number 4 it will be compiled and it will be converted into dot class file and this is the execution of program and this is the request processing phase so accordingly it execute the program and after executing the response is sent to the server with the jsp con container and finally the response move to the client through http uh, so here the protocol is used http http hypertext transfer protocol so this is the complete life cycle of the jsp page now next you can see so where is the jsp so basically we have web servers we have servlet con container we have database tiers and the initially we have the client so client are scattered all over the world so we have different different client we have millions of the node all over the world and these all nodes all client are connected with the web server so client send the request and accordingly 
the web server responded uh, as per the request and in web server we use uh, we use different different tools like html like uh, cgl like php and jsp asp many many tools are there in the web server so we use these tools accordingly accordingly the need accordingly the uh, the requirement so uh, this uh, server is this server program is developed by these tools so web server is there and as per the request web server further send the same request to the next servlet container and if server container requires some data then it will connect it will interface with the database layer and where it will fetch the data as per the requirement and uh, and the same time it also uh, also send the data if there is any data which is uh, sent by the client to the uh, web server so uh, that data also be stored in the database layer so suppose we have to upload or we have to insert some data then we send it to the database layer or suppose we have to fetch some information we have to search some data then we access that data from the database layer tire so uh, this is database tire and this is servlet container you can see in the diagram so this is the entire technology where one side is client another side is the uh, web server servlet container database tire database server or n number of servers are there uh, so here in this case we have limited server but suppose we have 1 2 3 4 5 servers are there then we can call it entire technology so jsp play here a very important role so jsp by using jsp we develop the web server we develop the program of web server we develop the server side programming only using by the jsp and jsp uh, is a embedded programming language with jsp we can use java beam we can use uh, servlet with jsp we can use html in jsp so many many jdbc can also be used in the Uh, jsp thank you learner thank you very much after uh, this lecture after listening this lecture learner will able to understand the directory structure of jsp as well as the jsp life cycle so thank you once again thank you very much learner